I know. I'm just trying to keep it real. That's why you're my guest, is to get, to get some real shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Eddie on the Go. Hello YouTube, I'm your host Eddie, and in today's video I have here as my guest my friend Chinedu Opara. Chinedu was born in Nigeria but lived most of his life in the United States until last year and now he lives here in Barangia, Colombia. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, Chinedu, welcome and thank you for being my first interviewee. Thank you for having me. This is quite an interesting uh, thing. I'm glad to be part of your channel. So, okay, um, I've already introduced you by name to our viewers. Can you give us your age and what you do for a living? All right, well, I am almost 49 years old. I'm a software developer by career and also um, teach English as a second language a few days a week to private students. Um, mostly here in Colombia. Uh, what is it like working remotely in a country like Colombia? Are there pros and cons you could tell us about? Well, the advantages are the same as the advantages in any other country, which is you get to have more or less flexible hours. I can have time to go to the gym in the morning before I start work because I don't have to commute. And of course, the cost of living factors into the whole advantage of working from Colombia. And I'll, I'll get to that a little later in the interview. Okay. Uh, when did you first visit Colombia and decide you might want to live here? All right, well, the story of my decision to move here is quite in interesting but straightforward. Um, in 2021, in the height of the pandemic, yeah. <laughs> in the height of towards the ending, I think it was towards the ending, when uh, a, few, a few countries were starting to open up, but most, most were still closed. So, um, for several reasons, which we'll get into later in the interview, I decided to move out of the USA. And based on some research I did online, I picked Colombia as the, as the best choice. And um, I started learning Spanish on July 1st, and I haven't stopped since then. So I visited Cartagena for two weeks. Uh, very first time in Colombia was for two weeks in July 2021. And I followed up with a three month stay here in Barranquilla in the last year, 2022, from April to May, April, May, sorry, April to June, April, May, June, almost exactly three months actually. Um, and then, you know, to give me the full living experience, catching the bus, right. buying things, looking for an apartment, all those things, opening a bank account, oh, yeah. getting cell phone service. Um, and then uh, I went back to the USA to sell off all my crap, my, my big old house, my luxury prison, I call it my luxury prison. Um, sold my car, closed a bunch of accounts, sold almost everything except for five big suitcases, which I filled up with some, mostly gadgets, mostly computer stuff, and some clothes, of course. And yeah, I moved here in November of 2022, and I've been in Barranquilla since then. Of course, I traveled around the country, especially recently. Went to Medellin, Bogota, Cali, and Cartagena again. But as of now, I am based here in Barranquilla. Okay. Um, what did, well, you already pretty much said what you had to do to prepare. Um, what are some of the challenges that you have faced as a foreigner living here in Colombia? Ah, uh, it's a good question. I wish I had written down a whole list, but I can, I can talk about it, um, give a little summary. I would say some of the challenges are the language, obviously, the, the language and cultural differences. Uh, my language, my Espanol, is still at El Nivel B1, no, officially B1, but in reality it's more like A2, simply because I live on the coast where they speak Castellón, Yeah. and Castellón is very difficult to understand. Right. Well, there's, there's good news. The good news is two parts. The good news is the stores have tons of spices. You can go to any Olympica, which is a very common grocery store here in Barranquilla. 
But all the stores, Exito, Caruya, um, Jumbo Americano in all of Colombia, almost all of Colombia, they have spices at the shops, entire aisle full of spices and salsas, amazing flavors. Obviously, those aren't being sold to locals. They're being sold to us, to extranjeros and other people. Secondly, if you go to um, the tourist cities like Cartagena and Medellin and Bogota, which is an international city, most likely you, you'll find um, more variety of food, more options, tastier, juicier, spicier cuisine. Um, you probably won't find, I haven't found Nigerian food, or Liberian food or Jamaican food, but I found Indian food in Bogota. Like I was telling you before, I posted a Google review about it because it damn near brought me to tears. <laughs> that was so I happy remember that day. To find Indian food in Bogota in all of Colombia, I found Indian food. I'm like, oh my god, I was so happy. My stomach was so happy, everything was so happy. Yeah. And if I go back to Bogota, that might be one reason I go back. <laughs> But well, yeah, Bogota, Medellin, Cartagena, you're most likely to find um, more food options there. So on the subject of culture and language, what are your thoughts about the culture in the city of Barranquilla compared to the other cities in Colombia that you've been to? And what are your thoughts on the differences in language, including dialect and accents between the areas of Colombia? Right, that's a, I can talk very specifically about language. And so it turns out that um, various parts of Colombia speak various dialects of Spanish. And there is Paisa in the interior, mostly in the interior, that I know of. And then there's Costeño here on the north coast. And I've been learning standard Spanish, which did not, I still does not, help me to understand or speak Costeño. <laughs> That's a different animal. Yeah, it's, in fact, I always make the joke the, the, the half joke, but also true. When I'm speaking to cab drivers and stuff, I'm like, el problema es costeño, no es español. And they're laughing, they get it, they understand how difficult it can, it can be. Um, my Spanish level is at officially B1, as I said earlier, but because of my difficulty with costeño, it's actually more functionally, more like A2, maybe even upper A1. My travels, in my travels to Medellin, Bogota, and Cali, I was having complete conversations in Spanish, especially in Cali. Um, something that I couldn't do on the coast here in Barranquilla, nor in Cartagena. I heard that the Costeño in Cartagena is actually worse. I've heard the same thing. And now that I, I, people have told me this, now it makes sense. True story, true story. You know, on my first visit to, to Colombia in Cartagena 2021, this one young lady I dated, dated, <laughs> I, I was very naive. Um, I thought she had a speech disability. <laughs> Real talk. Because I'm fresh, just starting to learn Spanish, you know, using Duolingo, Spanish Dict, Turbo Spanish, other apps, learning and listening to Spanish language broadcast news, and they try to keep their accents neutral. So here, here is this woman talking to the cab drivers and they understand her just fine. And she's speaking to me in Costeño. I didn't know it was Costeño at the time. I thought she had a speech disability. I felt so bad. I felt so bad at the time. And then later when I found out that it wasn't a speech disability, that it was just a heavy Costeño accent, I felt worse. I felt stupid. It's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy here because I have been with... Um Uber drivers and some I've been with like a couple that were uh, they speak pretty good Spanglish you know we, we were kind of can meet halfway and have a good conversation yeah but and then there's some that speak more rough and some that speak less so so yeah, yeah I know what you're saying it's hard even my um, my my obrero my handyman um, he's from some smaller town here on the coast, and he's even like he's he's my bilingual assistant says that's still Costeño, but I swear my handyman, whatever he's speaking, I don't think it's even Spanish, bro. Oh, there's people that you think it's like some native tongue. Yeah, because I'm putting my phone up to his mouth.
So I do have to mention one more thing about culture since you asked, and this doesn't fit into any other topic, so I'll, I'll mention it now. The Colombian sense of time is very different. They, their sense of time is, I'll put it mildly, I'll put it in a friendly way, is fluid. <laughs> very fluid. They don't, especially appointments, they restaurants, don't really, restaurants, the time it takes to be served, yeah, that's usually. usually. That's, just, that's, just, that's just bad customer service. But just in general. But I mean, I've seen that a lot here. Yes, yes. That, that, they all go together. Right? Like they have to kill the cow. And right. I guess there's even an expression here. For yeah, they, they all go together. The, 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 the sense of time, it's not a very, it's a very laid back, I mean, and, 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 and folks say laid back. I don't know if laid back is the right term because some parts of the USA and they say Europe, they're laid back, but they know how the fuck to keep to appointments. They know how to get to shit on time. But when they're not on appointment, they're they laid back, right? The thing is, and I don't want to use the word lazy either because I know Colombians will see this and like, oh, he's dissing our people. We're not lazy. No, I'm saying that there is a certain mindset, a certain cultural difference between Colombia and much of lack of Latin America, I heard, and the Western, more modernized countries. And that is sense of time. So in Colombia, now doesn't really mean now. Ahorita. Even right now doesn't really even mean right now. Ahorita, good example. You know? And I'm like, why don't you just use luego, like later? Right. But they keep saying ahorita, ahorita. I like, you're confusing people. You're confusing that. Spots. That is like a big wide, like, like a big now one. and now. This is your perception so, of now, right? So uh, ahora, which technically, in on the books means now, ahora mismo means right now. Yeah. But in real life, in real usage, ahora means could mean anything from now to never. And exactly, I've seen it said that way too. Yeah. And. Amplify that with women, from what I've always seen. That's a, that's a whole they different talk, conversation. Yeah. That's like, like a, when a woman, when you, when you tell a woman that that you know you're going to have dinner at a certain time, and she's still getting ready like three hours later. You know, that's an exaggeration. Yeah, it's no, no, that's, no, no, that's okay. reality. Okay, that is the fucking reality of. But that's day. that's what I've seen in, in regards <laughs> to women and getting ready for a date yeah. because they're so centered on looking their absolute yeah. best, but that takes. Them long, they, longer than I think they need to do. Yeah, they, I see the women here. I see the women here, and you know they're beautiful. And I mean, the ones that I that I see often here, like my friend Lisa, she doesn't need makeup. And but that's usually the case with with darker skinned women versus lighter skinned women. They look great to me without makeup. Remember the interviews. But they want to look. I know. I'm just trying to keep it real. That's why you're my guest is to get to get some real shit. Yeah, in. yeah, yeah. But I mean, women, women. Put, I, in my opinion, women put too much time into being beautiful when mm. the sometimes the the it's the, not necessary. The, the, the 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 foundation of it all is is great. Yeah. So at times it's just not necessary. But even aside from that, you have, for example, you know, I had a situation in Guarne, which is where I stayed when I first came to this country. I stayed there for a yeah. week. And the electrician was supposed to, the, the Airbnb host had called an electrician to fix something. The electrician kept saying ahora, or this afternoon, or whatever, and he it was never that. Eventually, he, he never showed up. Eventually, he showed up like the day before I was leaving, and he, he showed up without even calling. So we thought he had abandoned the project. He thought he, we thought he ghosted. And he showed up like the day, and like, oh, I had other clients. What the fuck? So you, you fucking tell your clients that you have clients and then you reschedule. How how the fuck hard can that be? Pero así es Panama también. Panama is the same way. And sometimes <laughs> in Nigeria too, but I'm oh, Nigerian, yeah. so I know how to, you know, I have the, the, the language is not an issue. Yeah, I, I know yeah, how to do with that shit. That's out of the picture. But it's not over there in Nigeria, it's not normal. It's not normal. If, if somebody pulls that shit, chances are somebody died. <laughs> Seriously, no, I, mean, I get are, it. I get it. Literally, a valid reason. There's a valid reason. Chances are somebody died because in Nigeria they want money. The workers want money, so they'll do their best to show up on time. If they don't so show they up get on paid time, sooner. yeah. They, if they don't show up on time, from my experience in in Nigeria, they'll text or call or you call them to check where they are, and you literally hear traffic in the background. They're trying or you literally hear them pushing the car out of the mud because there's a mudslide or wow. there's a rain issue. Yeah. So sure. they have valid reasons yeah. 
oftentimes their the biggest sin is not telling the client immediately but here for no reason at all no valid reason they'll just not show up or not call or they'll be super late and not tell anybody my flake with the mall situation yeah this concludes part one of my interview with Chinedu Opara. In part two, we will cover topics such as housing, dating, and more. I'll see you then. Ciao.